rotational equilibrium, rigid body, equilibrium statics, whatever you want to call it, problem, let's do it. Here is the problem. A ladder leans up, leans up against an ice wall, which you know can happen. So if it leans at a 42 degree angle, has a mass of 12 kilograms, a length of five meters, what's the minimum coefficient of friction to prevent that ladder from going vloop, slipping down like that? Okay, so in problems like this, we have three conditions that we must meet. We must meet, number one, the net force in the x direction is zero because it doesn't accelerate in the x direction. Number two, the net force in the y direction is zero. And finally, the torque net about some point O has to be zero, and that says that it doesn't change its rotational motion, so it's at, right now rotationally in equilibrium and with an angular velocity of zero, and we don't want that to change. Okay. So those three conditions have to be met in order for the ladder not to slip down and fall. And there's no person on the ladder, and this wall is ice to make things a little bit easier. So let's start off with a rigid body diagram. I like to call them a rigid body diagram. We'll redraw the, dot, the object, which is the ladder, and then all the forces acting on it with the location of the forces. So let's start with the first force that we always want to talk about, and that's the gravitational force. Gravity acts on all parts of the ladder, but we can represent it as a single force acting at the center of mass, which is at the center of the ladder, since it has a uniform density, mg. Next, we can look at what's touching the wall. The ladder, not the wall. The wall is touching the ladder. Let's start with the ice wall. I'm going to call that F ice. And since it's, it's an ice wall, there's no friction, so it only has a force perpendicular to the wall. So it's going to be like this. F, I'm going to call it F ice. Because I don't want to call it normal force, because I'm going to use it down here. Now down at the bottom, we have the interaction with the floor. And it actually, we can break that into two components for convenience. Uh, a normal force pushing perpendicular to the surface and a friction force per pushing uh, horizontal to the surface. Yeah, so let's call this N and I'm going to call this F friction. So right there, I can go ahead and create my two force equations. Let's call this the X and that the Y direction. And if we do that, then this F net equation becomes, there's only two forces in the X direction. We have the friction, the ice minus the force of friction, and that's equal to zero. So that means the friction is equal to the, to the ice force, right? Those two have to be equal. So let's just go ahead and solve that. F ice equals F friction. And then in the Y direction, I have N, the normal force, minus Mg equals zero. So two also, N equals Mg. Finally, Finally, if I know the friction force and I know the normal force and I'm looking for the minimum coefficient of friction, remember friction force is actually less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. But um, in this case, we're looking for the minimum coefficient, so that's going to be equal to it. So I can put right here, the friction force is F ice, and that's going to be equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force, which is mg. So all I need is to find that uh, force from the wall, F ice, and I can solve for mu s. And that's where that third equation comes in. So for the torque equation, remember, torque is R F sine theta, where R F is the force, R is the, the, the vector, it's technically a vector, from the point O to the force, and theta is the angle between those two. Now, we have an alternative version of this torque. I can write this as R perpendicular F or R F perpendicular. Those two are the same thing. So this says the, the torque arm that's perpendicular to the force or the force, the component of the force that's perpendicular to the torque arm. And both those are very useful. Now I do can I I do need, I can, I will pick the point about which I can calculate the torque. There is, there is no wrong answer, just like I can pick whatever x and y coordinates I want. It's not rotating about this point, it's not rotating about that point, it's not rotating about that point. So 
if I pick a point and I have forces pushing through that point, they will have zero torque and will not appear in the torque equation. So I want to choose a point that's convenient for me, a point where it has eliminated forces I don't want. Remember, I want to find that force, the force of the ice wall. So if I pick this point right here as my point O, then I, the, the torque due to the normal force is zero. The torque due to the frictional force, zero. So they're not going to be in the equation, so let's do that. So torque net O. So first let's look at this force. Now, I, I can use any of those three definitions for torque. I know this is a length L right there. And this, that's the angle theta, this right here is R perpendicular, right? That's the force, that's, perp that's a, the perpendicular distance to that force, right? Because it's, it's right there. So I'm going to find that R perpendicular is pretty easy. R perpendicular is going to be L sine theta, right? Because here's my triangle, right? Triangle, this is a, has a hypotenuse of length L, so the opposite side would be R, I mean L sine theta. So that means the torque due to that force is going to be L sine theta times F. Now, is it going to be positive or negative torque? So that force all by itself would cause this ladder to rotate that way. So we're going to say a clockwise, a clockwise rotation is negative, and that comes from the right-hand rule. Okay. So I'm going to say this is equal to, I'm going to get rid of that, negative F ice L sine theta. I know it looks a little messy. I don't know why. Let's think about the next step. F I L sine theta. That looks a little bit better. Okay, now this force right here is going to exert a torque in the counterclockwise direction, so it's going to be a positive torque. It's going to have, so it's going to be plus the force, mg. The torque arm, again, we can use this as our torque arm right here. Right, because that's the perpendicular distance, which is the same as that. And in this case, since um, based on the way my triangle is, and because the force is down, this is the uh, adjacent side of that triangle. So it's going to be the length of this hypotenuse is L over 2, and then cosine theta. And those are my only two torques. They have to add up to 0. So let's add this to the other side, and I get F I L sine theta equals mg L over 2 cosine theta. Take a look what happened right here. The L cancels. So that's one of those things where you're like, hey, if you don't plug everything in right away, you might be rewarded for your good behavior later. And that's my reward. Now I'm going to divide by sine theta. Fi is mg over 2 cosine theta over sine theta. And you can write that as what's a cotangent, but I always like to deal with sines and cosines and tangents. And you don't even have to do that, but I'm going to do it. So sine over cosine is tangent. So this is going to be mg over 2 tangent theta. That's my force from the wall. I can put that in up here, and then I can solve for the coefficient of friction. So let's put this in up there. I get, I'll just set it equal. It's already there. Mu s m g, right? Because that's that, that's that. Oh, look at that. I'm rewarded once again. The mass canceled. Oh, wait, look at this. Once again, g canceled. Okay, so now I'm done. Mu s is going to be 1 over 2 tangent theta. Let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. 1 over 2 times the tangent of 42 degrees. And then we'll talk about some very important stuff. Calculator. It's getting ready to rain. It's a little dark in here. But I think look, the colors look kind of nice, don't you think? Okay. My, my other light's not working for some reason. Okay. 42 tangent 2 times 1 over 0.556. Yeah, 0.56. So that's the minimum coefficient of, and friction I need for that to not fall over. Now let's just let's just check something. What if I lean the ladder closer to the wall like this? In that case, 
theta would have to be a larger number. Let's say it's, let's just put in, let's put in theta is equal to 80. Okay, and I'm measuring from the horizontal here. So if I put in 80 tangent two times one over, I get a coefficient of friction of 80 degrees. I get 0 0.08. So much smaller, right? The more, you, the lower this angle is, the more it leans back, the more friction that you're gonna need. Why do you need more friction in order to prevent the ladder from falling over? So, oh, here's a ladder. So as I lean it down more and more, then what's gonna happen is, what is gonna happen? The torque from the wall, I'm gonna have less torque from the, the wall. You think it'd be, if I lean it down like that, then about this point, that force is going to produce a less torque. But so I need uh, more friction because also this is going to push up less. No, it's going to push up the same amount. So why wouldn't the coefficient get larger? It would get larger. I just did it. Okay, well, let's look at the other two things. Why does the length not matter? Why does L cancel? L cancels because the torque is proportional to L and so is the weight. And it's really the ratio of those two torques that matter. And that does not depend on the length. What about the mass? The mass doesn't matter also because the gravitational force exerts a force down, but the normal force is proportional to that. We've seen lots of cases where mass cancels on situations with friction. And number two, Three, why does the gravitational force cancel? This would work on the moon. On the moon, you would have less torque from gravity pulling it down, but you'd also have uh, need less force pushing up to get that same frictional force. So the friction force to prevent it the other way. Okay, now lastly, here are some variations of this problem that are pretty fun. And you can do these on your own. You can create your own problem. What if, and I'm not gonna solve them right now, maybe I'll solve them later. What if you have friction on both sides? What if there's friction here and there? Well, in that case, you have, I'll call this N1, N2, Mg, and then I'm going to get a frictional force pushing up, and this frictional force is pushing this way. So it's going to get a lot more complicated because this normal force depends on that frictional force. This normal force depends on that frictional force. So it's it's doable, but it just gets a little bit more complicated. The same idea is the same, and you can set up the same equations. The next kind of problem is, what if I have a person climbing the ladder? In that case, how, as they move higher and higher, that person's gonna exert an, an additional torque, and it's gonna make it require that you need more and more friction right there to prevent it from falling over. Again, the idea is the same, the math gets a lot more complicated. You can work on those problems uh, for homework for this homework. Homework, homework.